be tonight. If you are not be for the Lord who was on your side the first six months, January, February, March, April, May, June, the enemy came. Satan came to sift you as wheat. But the Lord, but the Lord delivered you. And this is why we are going to go into praise tonight. I want you to begin to praise him. Thank you for preservation. Thank you that you did not die. Thank you you did not lose your children. In the first six months, Satan came. But you are remaining strong. I want you to praise God. I want you to thank him. And say, Father, thank you. Lord, we say thank you. with David, the first nephew of the family, and I prayed for the rest of them. Sat Sunday morning, laying on my bed listening to Pastor Moses on a, a message I wanted to hear again about believing. I get, a, I get a buzz on my phone. It's my niece, David's aunt. Her message says, David is in Mexico in a coma. Not her child. I didn't even read the rest of the message. I called her. She told me David's in a coma. We don't know what happened. They didn't even know he's in Mexico. I started messaging everybody on WhatsApp. Got my other niece on the phone. She said, the Wren family, a family that was in his neighborhood when he was younger, happened to be visiting the same area, and they ran into him. Their son was walking on the beach with David. David collapsed. Two American women gave him CPR, took him off to the hospital. He's in the hospital. His mother starts getting calls from the hospital. She's calling because his this woman, the mother of the Wren woman, stayed with David the whole time. She had just begun her vacation, you know, and she didn't have to do that. That was Praise God. Him. So her mother keeps getting, his mother starts getting calls from the hospital. They want $35,000. They don't want insurance. They want $35,000 to send him to another hospital that has a better respirator. She doesn't have the money. They, then they raise the price to $50,000. State Department says this hospital's known for that. There's nothing they can do. She contacts the embassy. There's nothing they can do. But God. Our God. Our God. God. Our God takes care of it. Our God takes care of it. Our God takes care of it. She sends back a message. They arranged a, a Learjet to fly him from Mexico to Houston, which will refuel and take him to Michigan. Now, he's living in Texas, okay? Take him to Michigan where my family is, where his family is. The Learjet is supposed to take off on Tuesday. It doesn't leave till Wednesday. It's supposed to arrive at 10.30 p.m. Wednesday night. My niece texts back. The Learjet is, is, is refueled. should be here at 9.18. At 10.15, David is taken out of the ambulance, and my family is standing there. David's been in a coma. He has not opened his eyes or anything. And they're calling his name. David opens his eyes. It's God. <laughs> they get him in the hospital. And... He finally opens his eyes. The next day he says, Ma, you have blue hair. <laughs> she, everybody says he's on drugs, he's loopy. David Julian Walker yesterday. Praise on the God. way to church today, tonight, David called me. Praise God! Will you give God a big shout of praise? Will you give God a big shout of praise? With a loud shout, we are proud to 
months. I don't know about you. I have been so excited. You see, the troubles have come and they are behind us now. In the next six months, we are walking into abundance. We are walking into prosperity. We are walking into the goodness and the mercy of God. And so, we are going to be praying tonight. We are going to be programming the next six months. We are going to be programming them. There is a condition to this. This is what the Lord said to me while worship was going on. Therefore, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Tell yourself, no room for sadness in me. No room for sadness in me. In the next six months, there is no room for sadness. In this year, 2023, there is no room for sadness. All things will be happening to me. It will be joy, joy, joy. Amen. And so, we are starting off with Matthew 6, 33. It says, but... Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all this shall be added to you. You are going to be praying and say, Father, I commit myself into your hands. I am seeking you in all that I do. In the next six months, tonight I have come. I am seeking you. Lift, are you tired? Are you tired of praying? Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Father, Six months, let Shatalamanus, everything that concerns you, every kingdom business, it is my business. Lord, I am seeking you first. I am seeking you first before I make that decision. I am seeking you first, and it's righteousness when it comes to soul winning. I am seeking you first in the mighty name of Jesus. I am not joking with kingdom business. Hey, Kalusa, tell the Kuria, and Sata. Father Lord, you have said this is our year of going forth. I am going forth in the name of Jesus. I am going forth at your word. I am going forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Daniel 2.22 It revealed the deep and secret things. It knows what's in the darkness. And the light dwells with him. See, you are going to be asking the Lord to reveal the deep and secret things to you. The Lord knows when you have the revelation of things, you will not be afraid. When you have the revelation of things, you will move at the speed of the light. This is what Daniel knew. Daniel knew who his God is. Daniel is the one that said to us, they that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. You know why? Because he had a revelation of who God is. And so this is what you need to know tonight. When the people came for Daniel, they said, no, you can no longer pray to God. You know what Daniel did? He said, uh-huh. I can no longer pray to God. He said, 
said, I will pray three times. He opened the windows. Hey, he opened the windows. He was not ashamed of God. He opened the windows. When they come and tell you, if you don't take the vaccination, this is what's going to happen to you. You open your window and say, look at me. I am here. I am here. You know, when they said, you couldn't travel out last year without vaccination when it was time for the Andersons to go to England. Guess what? They lifted all those things and the Andersons, we could go out and go back in. This is what it means. When you know your God, you will do exploits. You will be strong. Lift up your voice tonight and say, Father, reveal the deep secret things to me. Lord, I am asking for a revelation tonight. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. You are not too young to have a revelation of God. Father, Lord, I am ready. Reveal the deep and secret things to me, oh God. I pray tonight what I need, what I need to survive the next six months, Father. Reveal it to me, oh God. I don't want to live my life careless in the mighty name of Jesus. Malika Satana Kuriana Sata. Oh Father Lord, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. We exalt you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Psalms 115, verse 14 and 15. May the Lord give you increase more and more, you and your children. I thought I would hear a resounding amen. amen. <laughs> and verse 15 says, May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. I want you to speak into your second half of the year. I said, my second half of the year, it shall be greater. I shall be blessed. My second half of the year, it shall be greater than my first half. In the mighty name of Jesus, I decree and I declare. He says, may the Lord give you increase. More and more, not only you, your children. He says, you and your children. You and your children. Did you pray for your children? By next month, the children are going back to school. And the Lord is giving us a promise. He said, I will increase you. I will increase your children. Can you see the abundance in your household? My children will increase in favor. In the name of Jesus. Manika Sutale Kuriana Sata. Empires of Destiny. Ah, La Kuria Nusata. I call the Father. Oh, La Sezelemo. Manika Nusata. Oh, Father, we give you praise. Lord, we exalt you. We glorify you. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know, in the month of June, there have been some prophecies that some of us haven't tapped into. I was going through my notes. I was like, oh, did I miss this? There was a prophecy on the 3rd of June. He said we will be breaking barriers. He said we will be breaking barriers. Did you tap into that? There was another prophecy that our testimonies will be loud. <laughs> you guys, when, when I was reading my notes, this is why when you come to church, especially coming on house, you have to write. When you go back home, you're watching. Write them down. In Revelation chapter 21, Pastor Moses said, go back home. I've given you three. <laughs> I went back home and I was reading one of the scriptures. He said, it is done. 
Whatever you ask me, it is done. I started to claim that. <laughs> Listen. Whatever. If you have missed it, the mercy of God is available for you tonight. I want you to begin to pray. Father, every prophecy that I've been spoken on this altar, tonight, 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 I claim them in the name of Jesus. Lord, those prophecies are mine. I claim them. I am not leaving anything on the table in the name of Jesus. Every prophecies, every prophecies that has been spoken here that you have sent your servant. Oh God, I begin to claim them in my life, in my husband's life. I come in and out. It will be loud. It will be loud in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, you said it is done. It is done. Anything I ask you, it is done. It is done. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I give you praise. Oh, Father, I thank you. Finally, I want you to begin to plead the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus saves, it redeems, it restores. The blood of Jesus heals. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus over the month of July. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus over the month of August. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus over the month of September. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus <laughs> over the month of October, over the month of November and December, Father. Hey, Kalima Lushotoriana. Oh, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, it speaks better things than the blood of heaven. My knees are torn I plead the blood of Jesus over my household. I plead the blood of Jesus over my household. I plead the blood of Jesus over our businesses. I plead the blood of Jesus over our ministry. I plead the blood of Jesus. Thank you for tonight. Lord, we have come to say thank you. Finally, if you are a business person, I want you to come out here. The Lord gave me the scripture. He said, I want to make room. I want to make room for the business owners. I want to make room. Hey, Kalika Lushotoriana. Hey, Masetelebo. This is the scripture God gave me. <laughs> Genesis chapter 26. And the Lord wants you guys. If you're a business owner, you have to go and meditate on the scripture. Genesis 26. The Lord made room for Isaac. It was evident. The Lord made room for him. And so, I want you to believe this. He said, I want to make room. For the business owners, for kingdom business, for kingdom expansion. Please do not rob God. When he makes room, do not rob God. Look what it says. I want to quickly read Genesis 26. There was a famine in the land. Besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, <laughs> to Abimelech king of the Philistines in Gera. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. Wait for God's instruction. You have to do whatever God tells you. Dwell in this land and I will be with you. Then I said, He will be with you and He will bless you. For to you and your descendants, I give all these lands. And I will perform the hope which I swore to, your, to Abraham your father. And I will make your descendants multiply <laughs> as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lands. And in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Why? Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments. I want you to begin to pray and speak. This is your moment. Speak to the Lord concerning your business because he said uh, he's going to make room. Jehovah is going to make room. Rehoboth, we call you first. Rehoboth, Father, for every business that is represented here, Father. Thank you, Lord, 
Thank you, Lord. Hey, Kalamano, Sataliana. Lord, they will testify. Lord, they will testify. Valisa Tuna, Kusha Taliana. Yes, Father. You will make room for them. Yes, you will make room. <laughs> that business is not just for you alone. It says your descendants, generations, will benefit from what is going to come out of this business. Valisa Tuna, Kusha Father Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we thank you. Because you are faithful, you said you will make room for this one. You make room for this one. Hey, Malisa Tula Kuriana. Father Lord, I have come. I come to deliver your word as you have spoken it to me. There shall be testimonies in the name of Jesus. I declare. And I decree right now, your business is open yes. in the name of Jesus. Rehoboth, amen. I want you to give the Lord a big shout of praise. Give him a big shout of praise. If you believe it, give him a big shout of praise. Lord, you are making room for this one. Hey, you are faithful. You are faithful. Lord, you are faithful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the rain. Thank you for the rain. Thank you for the rain of abundance. Thank you for the rain. Hey, thank you for the rain. Lord, we give you praise. As you go back to your seat, I want you to be thanking him. Thank him. Give him praise. Thank him. Worship him. Thank him. He is faithful. He is faithful. Jehovah Jireh. He is faithful. He is faithful. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She can There's none like you, O oh God. There is none like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, my God. Father, we give you praise. All of our praise belongs to you. All of our glory. It belongs to you. You're worthy, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Shebra, Shekera, my eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's up, bro? <laughs> I've been saying this a lot lately, but ain't you glad you came tonight? Come on, somebody. You know, reminded as the woman of God was prophesying, ministering what the Holy Spirit had delivered to her was how she reminded us of how the words that we get here, we got to do battle over them. You got to hold on to them. You got to press into it. You got to fight for it. What a night of encouragement. I want us to really draw from the oil that is flowing in abundance here to press on. You see, the woman of God came by the Holy Ghost 
to encourage us to declare concerning the rest of our year because we know what the previous six months have been. Come on, somebody. It's our time to rejoice. We give God praise. Quickly, while we're in this atmosphere, and I say quickly because I know how we do, let's just go love on somebody real quick. Greet someone with a holy kiss. Share with somebody the goodness of God. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we give you praise. Y'all know we got an on-time word tonight. Let's go ahead and make our way back to our seats if we can. Best we can. Hallelujah. Lord, the sweet. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. As we're making our way back, I want us to, uh, to stand quickly because uh, we're going to prepare to receive the man of God here. Such an awesome time tonight. I thank God for this atmosphere. You know, you got to come in and set the tone. You know, the man of God has been encouraging us lately to shake off the beast into the fire. Those days we get up, we may not be feeling it, but to press in anyhow, and I'm so thankful because it's in this atmosphere that we can draw from the Holy Ghost, we can draw rejuvenation. We can draw the energy to press on. This is why we forsake not the assembly together, the gathering together of ourselves, Father, we give you praise. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, celebrate the Lord. Yeah, this night off the chain. This unusual night. Come on, somebody. Just a few seconds. Let's talk in the Holy Ghost. Just a few seconds. We want to get all we can from the word that is being delivered unto us tonight. Father, we give you praise for the oil of the anointing that flows in abundance here tonight. Father, we thank you that you have granted unto us the ability to see you tonight, to hear you, O oh God. We thank you for the man of God that you have set before us. And by your Holy Ghost, we shall receive and hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto the churches. All glory and honor belong to you. We all say amen. And let us celebrate the man of God here. The Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo! Come on, let's be seated. Praise God. You see, this is the reason why you do not forsake the gathering together of yourselves. Because you just never know what regiment of angels will be on assignment who have special abilities to take care of your long-standing situations. And I'm going to say that again because someone else is still, someone is still trying to give that one last hug before we continue. But I say it and I say it again, you just never know the particular service, the particular service that will have in attendance Angels with special abilities to do 
justice to that which has been messing you up. You see, we have been speaking quite a bit lately about the ministry of angels because we know that when God is about to shift things in the body, he commissions the angels of the ecclesia. And so I know that some of us think that we just need that God in angel that you read about on Facebook. But let me tell you something, there are angels that cannot solve the problem that is facing you. Remember Daniel prayed and the angel that was bringing his prayer could not overpower the prince of Persia. He had to phone home and get help. But I have come to tell you today that I knew and I am confident that in that prayer there were angels who have divine abilities to take down and to take out long-standing problems that you may have been having. Let me tell you something. I don't care about your unbelief and I don't give a damn about your lack of sensitivity. I have a mandate from the Holy One. Get in line or get out of here in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me tell you something. If you have come in the spirit of witchcraft, I dare you to attempt to do something because I am playing with you today. I have been messed about too much and for too long by demonic forces and witchcraft spirits. I am not who I was. Enough is enough. The people of God will receive of the power of God. No holds barred. Let me tell you something. I am tired of witches coming to my meetings. There was a time we had them coming for months. What a shame. I have come here today to announce to you, hear me, your kingdom of darkness, so you may know where I stand. I stand in the power of the grace of the anointed one and in his anointing. I will not be tried again and anyone who tries it will never try another again. Because the Lord says, enough is enough. Let's be seated. You know, one of the things that the Lord has called me in is in spiritual warfare. You need to let them know what you're doing. God speaking, he said, will I do a thing without revealing it to my servants, the prophets? The Bible says that he is light with him. There is no variableness, no shadow of turning. The Luciferians out there and the elites who are trying to control your life and mine, they put out what they want to do. They may put it out in animation movies, in comedy but they have to put it out because it's a spiritual principle that you cannot go to war without letting the opposition know what you are going to do. When Jesus was going to hell, when he was going to the cross, he spelt out what he was going to do. He said, I'm going to give you a glimpse of what is about to happen. He said, I see Satan fall like lightning simply because he knew what he was going to do when he went deep down to hell. And so I've come to announce to you so that you do not have an excuse to say you did not warn us. I have told you, you need to keep out of communion house meetings if you are not for God. Simply because there is a new fire that is coming out in this place. If you can feel it already, know it now. Because it's not about to go away. It is here to stay. It is here to brew. It is here to grow. Imagine what would have happened if Daniel stopped praying. His answer would have been stuck by a principality. But now look at you. You are not even where Daniel was. Daniel was operating under the old covenant. But now you are seated in Christ Jesus. 
you are an heir of salvation together with him who is called the head of principalities. God forbid that you get to the presence of your heavenly father and get told that you could have done more if only you had prayed more. The last time I checked, true prayer is still free. True prayer. Not gimmickry. Not mammon. Not folks trying to monetize the grace of God. Remember what the apostle said to Simon the sorcerer who offered up money for the power of the Holy Ghost. Simon the sorcerer was told that as long as he continued in that vein, he will have no part in the kingdom because freely have we received and so freely do we give. You see the power that changes everything, the power that decommissions principalities is prayer and it is free and it is available to you and you know how to do it. And so God forbid that you continue without prayer. I say that today to say that the angels of God are situated to do more for us, but we need to clear the way for them to come. Because you have authority upon the earth. Jesus says, whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. You have heard this expression, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. My wife read to us a scripture concerning Isaac. The Bible says, God said, I am going to make room for Isaac, not because of Isaac, but because of Abraham. Can I ask you a question tonight, Dinyara, and is God your God? If the Almighty is your God, then that means there is an Abraham in you, there is an Isaac in you, and there is a Jacob in you. You see, because he says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So when he says, I am the God of Anida, that means he is waiting to see the Abraham in you come forth. He says, I would do it because of my friend Abraham, because he honored my word. I will make room for Isaac because Abraham made room for my word. When your heart makes room for the word of God, God will make room for you to laugh because Isaac means laughter. And you see what happens is when God is done making room for your Isaac, which allows you to laugh in the face of difficulties, even before you have received that which you petitioned of the Lord, then the Lord will cause for Isaac to give birth to your Jacob. And who is Jacob? Jacob is the one that is ready to not give up until he has received. He said, I will not let go until, until you have blessed me. You want to give up? God is the God of Jacob. You cannot give up because Jacob doesn't give up. This was the revelation that David had. And he began, he began to shout and run around the palace. He says, I am Jacob, the generation of those who seek the Lord. I will not lose. I will not be consumed. So I tell you what, in the remaining half of this year, you would have to get up and clear the road for your angels like Jacob did. Jacob, by his determination, his determination became a ladder that went from the ground into the heavens. And the angels were so excited. They're like, we've been wanting to bring you blessings. But now you have set up the ladder. We are coming to you. Set up your ladder in the place of prayer. Set up your ladder and position your ladder by your tenacity so that nothing gets in the way of you receiving the things that will make you look like you are truly a child of God. He says you will not borrow, but you will lend unto nations. And because he said that, the angels have become aware that they have to bring you blessings. I need to say this very quickly because I do not want to forget. You see, and I believe this is the right time to say it because even if I forget, he will remind me. You see, when my wife was praying for business people, my wife was praying, and by the time she got to that prayer for children, I was already about two minutes ahead of that time. 
I saw the prayer for children. I saw the prayer for businesses. And one of the things that I saw, even before she called it out, I knew we were getting to that place. But let me tell you one of the things I saw as she was praying. The Lord said to me, you see these business people, some of their businesses have died. Some of their businesses are in Hades. I come here to announce to you today that the Lord has made a promise to you that he will not allow his holy one to see corruption. Neither will he abandon you in Hades. If that business is of the Lord, it will be resurrected. If that idea is of the Lord, it will come back into the land of the living and it will begin to produce for you and for others in the mighty name of Jesus. And so you business people, tap into the resurrection power and say to yourself, my work will not die but live. My fruits will not die but multiply in the name of Jesus. About a minute or two before we prayed for children, my wife, I believe she read from Psalms 115. The Lord took me to Psalms 105. And in Psalms 105, the word of the Lord says, I'm getting ready to bring famine upon the earth. I was the one that provoked the kings so that they can have a hardened heart toward me that gives me the justification to bring forth my outstretched arm. He said, because I have set these two things into motion, the kings will become restless, they'll become more greedy, they would want to lay more burdens on the people, and the result of that is that I will punish them with famine. And so this is what the word of the Lord says in Psalms 115. Between the hardness of their heart and famine, the Lord says, I have put protection seal upon my children. Touch not my anointed. And do my prophets no harm. Your children need to be anointed. So that the Lord will rebuke kings for their sakes. The agenda of the Luciferians will not touch your elementary schooler. Will not touch your middle schooler. Will not touch your high schooler. Simply because the anointing upon your head is flowing like the oil upon the head of Aaron. Your children need to be anointed. Your animals need to be touched by the power of God. Everything in your household needs the anointing. Something powerful happened to me a few days ago. And I woke up and I told my wife, I said, I don't even know how to feel about what I saw. I said, but I, I am just content with where I was taken to. I was here on Tuesday and I said to y'all that I'm happy when I have the resolve within me to come to God. I love it when I'm able to put my flesh down to pray and to seek him. I cherish the privilege of being able to awaken in righteousness and allow myself to seek the God of my salvation while he may be found. But what else did I tell you? I said I do not glory in such an effort, but I glory in his own goodness when he comes to me. And he came to me. You see, the Lord will honor you if you honor the Lord. I was just tired of seeing people holding the microphone and magnifying their own ability to pray. I was just tired for, for, for a while. I had just about had enough of people making others feel little by telling you how many hours to pray and how many days they fast. When the word of God says, it is not by power, nor by mind. When the word of God says, it is not of him that wills, nor of him that runs, but it is of God that shows mercy. And the Lord saw the posture of my heart. And I'm like, I'm not going to continue along that line of boasting in my own righteousness. And that is the reason why I, I announced to you 
that it is with great joy that I anticipate the visitation of the Lord. And then things became even more difficult after I made that announcement. Almost every phone conversation ended in a disappointment. And everything that was happening around me was suggesting that I needed to seek the Lord. And I reminded myself of what I was saying on Tuesday, that it is good to seek the Lord. But it is better to be found by him. And so I said, like Job said, all the days of my vain life, I will wait. I had every reason to get on my knees to pray. And for some reason, my wife intensified her prayers. I came under peer pressure. I'm like, man, the way this woman is praying, I'm supposed to be praying too. I said, but this time around, what I am looking at in front of me is like the mountain before Zerubbabel. I said, but this time around, I have decided to let the Lord arise so that the mountains can begin once again to skip like lambs because the Lord has spoken. And so I shut my eyes and I was thinking about all the things that I need to pray about until suddenly there was something that spouted out of me. And you know what it was? Into your hand I commit my spirit. I have been studying the word of God and the life of Christ, but I have never come across a prayer more potent. It was the prayer Jesus said on the cross. You know that prayer is more powerful than 12 million angels. Jesus said, I could have called down a legion of angels. 12 million of them. But he didn't. Instead, he gave his ghost to God. I want to encourage you, if you have been in this kind of situation and you would know within your heart that your prayers don't seem to be hitting the mark, you need to learn how to just let go sometimes and let God. But it is not for those people who haven't once prayed. It is not for those people who haven't seen the very end of themselves. So don't just say, well, Pastor Moses says don't pray. So you're just going to be on Netflix and expect miracles. I had prayed and it was just that I had come to the end of myself. And when I said into your hand, I commit my spirit. I, I slept in my bed, but then I woke up in another place. And when I opened my eyes without anybody telling me, I knew that I had come into one of the un chattered territories of heaven. The place where I found myself, supernaturally, I knew that it had no address. You know when they say a place is unchattered, there is no, there are no coordinates for the place that I was. And when I found myself in that place, the Lord revealed to me the spirit of unction. He stood before me as a giant ego and I'm not allowed to say more for now than that about this spirit. But one of these days, I pray that the Lord will grant me the privilege of sharing more with you about what I saw. And he started to converse with me, and I became another man. How did I know that I became another man? Because it was very unlike me to not have something to say. But when this spirit started to converse with me, I felt authority that seemed infinite and ancient. I knew that I had come in the presence of power. I was privileged. I felt privileged, but I felt very little at the same time. He appeared to me in the cleft of the rock. And I knew that I had become another man. Why am I sharing that with you? I want to help your expectations. Simply because the Lord has put me in charge of this operation to serve you when it comes to ushering in the insights of what the hand of the Lord wants to perform 
in my office as a prophet. And so I say this to you today. Drop your old expectations of who your heavenly father is. Renew your anticipation of the things that he has promised. Because you do not want to come with a teacup to the river of life when you can bring a tank. I tell you, you do not want to whisper when you are meant to command. But for you to have a shift, you need knowledge of the doings of the Most High. So I say to you today, communion house, it's a new day. It's a new hour. And it is being confirmed by a new visitation. We were visited in that time of prayer. And I beseech you by the mercies of God. That you will convince yourself in the Holy Spirit. That things have changed and you have changed. And because of that you can expect glory to begin to be seen in your life and in your circumstances. I will not bother you with words tonight simply because we have shifted into the dimension of manifestation. We've, we've been talking. This is how I heard it. We've been talking and now we shall be taking. Let me tell you something folks. I release you by the mercies of God to the charge of the force of heaven called the spirit of unction. That from now on, you will utter a thing and it will come to pass. That you will pray and the angels will act upon what you say. That you will make a declaration and there will be change in your heart. Repentance shall be the order of your mind. Power shall be the order of your speech. And above all, dedication shall be the order of your heart. Your heart will be inclined to the Lord and power shall be inclined to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now rise, shine, for your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. God bless you, Communion House. I'll see you on top Tuesday if you can make it. But take that power and let it change you so that you can change things. We're done talking, folks. Now we're going taking. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wow. <laughs> Praise God. Um, if someone can put the offering slides up, uh, we just do the offering and then um, I bless the offering. You can stay back to enjoy the presence of God here or you can take it home, whatever you decide to do. As you know, this is a prophetic ministry and so we are led by the Spirit of God. Amen. And so I know <laughs> I have been blessed, a lot of confirmations tonight. And so I want you to come. I want you to worship the Lord with your offering tonight. Amen. And so the giving slides is off. You can bless the Lord with your offering tonight. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for giving us the seed to sow. For you give the seed. And so, Father, I decree and declare over the seeds that have been sown tonight, Father, that it will multiply. Isaac got a hundredfold. And this will be our portion here tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. See you guys on Tuesday. Bye.